this is a call for an uprising. And instead of my normal introduction, I thought with the type of video that I'm doing, I should introduce myself. My name is a call for an uprising. And today I'd like to talk about crimes against humanity. I'm sure you've heard the expression before, crimes against humanity, but you never thought much about it. Well, the definition of a crime against humanity would be a deliberate act, typically as part of a systematic campaign that causes human suffering or death on a large scale. So, that being said, and yes, you could of course use crime against humanity with a lot of things going on, how about this trending topic with Elon Musk and crypto millionaires talking about artificial wounds and how in China this is really happening. I kid you not, artificial wounds, synthetic wounds, make having kids much faster, easier, cheaper, and more accessible. So moms, you're no longer needed apparently, and dads, well, you might as well get a visectomy now and save yourself the headache because we're going to grow our babies in a lab the same way we're now growing our meat in a lab. Why not just grow it all in a lab? Why not? At what point do we decide that these people have too much power? At what point do we decide that maybe the people need to rise up before it's too late, and then the people literally have to rise up and fight against the machines, like the predictive programming and Terminator-type films? When we're having babies created inside of labs. Now, of course, we know the liberals will love this, because then it'll just be easier for, you know, people who shouldn't and couldn't give birth in the first place to have babies and, of course, raise them the wrong way. Hysterical headlines, according to the article, over Twitter, between Tesla CEO Elon Musk and Ethereum co-founder, Vlatilak Burdin, no idea how to say it, and e-commerce platform Gumroad founder, Shalina Lavarinjara, musing over possible world population collapse, and how we need to start creating more synthetic wombs as a solution. Well, why would there be a collapse in world population? Is it because chemicals, there's so many chemicals trails, being doused on people that they're not able to have children? Vision, that men and women together can't procreate? Prodigies, because they're either having early miscarriages in their process of having children, control, or mm, they can in the first place have it, and they're supposed to feel like it's normal that so many men can't make babies, or vice versa, that women can't hold on to babies. Nobody want to look at the real problem. Your ingredient labels, what's falling from the sky, possible magic potions being put into people's bodies, willingly, of course. Shitting. Or are we supposed to just believe that it's science and evolution, that it's just happening this way? And don't forget to factor in what they're doing in today's world where men and women aren't even interacting with each other anymore and they're doing all of their uh if you want to call it intercourse over technology so to speak oh, they're not even allowed to be in the same room together so this is a nice transition into synthetic wounds like wounds where we can create baby robots with baby altered G <laughs> dna where they're already born with nanoparticles in them why bother forcing it in from the parents or forcing it in from you know big brother They'll just create them with nanoparticles and we'll pretend like they're regular humans. They're more advanced. Oh, it sounds like a great idea, right? No, it doesn't. That, my friends, is a crime against humanity. And for those of you wondering what I'm talking about, and you haven't heard about this yet, this absolute nightmare that is going on, this type of technology that, well, they think is going to be for the betterment of humanity, take a look at this and learn for yourself at just what they have planned. This is the artificial womb facility, a place where humans could be grown entirely from scratch. What? The devices on, you see people. here are called growth pods. Each growth pod is designed to replicate the same conditions that exist inside the mother's uterus. Growth pods are designed to host human fetuses until they are fully developed. These artificial wombs are designed to help premature babies to continue developing after their birth. But emerging oh, scientific research is making it possible really to use that? them to create designer humans entirely from scratch. Oh, 
terms of design, the artificial womb consists of the growth chamber which hosts the fetus. It replicates the same environment provided by the mother's uterus. It is the incubation chamber that provides the optimal temperature and humidity for the growth of the fetus. There is another container which provides the fetus with a constant stream of blood that is rich of oxygen until the moment of birth. The artificial womb is filled with the amniotic fluid, which is the liquid that surrounds the fetus inside the mother's uterus. This liquid is rich of the essential nutrients that are needed to sustain the unborn fetus inside the womb. The growth chamber also features advanced sensors coupled with artificial intelligence. These sensors monitor the fetus's vital signs during the development process, which include breathing and heartbeat. The artificial womb also features a screen which displays real-time data on the development progress of the fetus. Inside this growth pod, the fetus is kept for nine months until a full course of development is reached. It said my piece pass. Never ever. The concept of growing babies inside an artificial environment is called ectogenesis. Ecto means outside and genesis means formation. And it isn't really new. The history of the artificial womb dates back to the early 1950s. The first design of the artificial womb was patented by Emanuel Greenberg back in yeah. 1955. Yeah. He developed the concept of the hope of helping premature babies to continue developing after their birth. Back then, baby incubators already existed. So no one really moved forward to building the prototype of the artificial womb. Sure, In it, the 1990s, researchers at Tokyo University's medical department tested the artificial womb to see if it actually works. They removed a goat fetus from its mother by C-section. Then they placed it in a rubber womb filled with artificial amniotic fluid and the little guy was delivered 17 days later. In 2002, scientists built mini artificial wombs using cells extracted from the uterus itself. These lab-made wombs allowed embryos to attach themselves to their walls, just like the natural process. Even though the embryos began to grow and develop, they were terminated five days later due to ethical concerns. Hmm, I wonder why. In 2017, scientists from the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia managed to use a primitive design of the artificial womb where they placed a premature lamb fetus. After keeping the lamb fetus for four weeks inside the artificial womb, it started growing a wool coat, gained weight, and even opened its eyes. The researchers went on to test their design of the artificial womb with more lamps, and their experiments were successful. Oh, and if that wasn't scary enough for you, here's the article out of China, as of right now, an AI robot nanny will care for human embryos in artificial wombs. Exactly what we all need, right? If this doesn't look like something right out of the Matrix, well, oh, it is right out of the Matrix. Because, well, you want to find what's going on out, you really could watch the Matrix. Because they're going to show you pretty much every single thing that's going on, almost, in the Matrix. Right? We see all the people in the pods. Well, get ready for it. Scientists have tried to create an AI robot system that cares for human embryos growing in artificial wombs. When we think AI monitor humans in artificial wombs, we think of the Matrix. However, the researchers behind the Very Real Project believe their new system will be a force for good that will help to boost China's population. So let's not address the low birth rate. Let's, because, you know, why it would happen. It just suddenly is happening, folks. It's just suddenly happening. The low birth rate. Nothing could be causing it. It's just something in the wind going on. Huh? We all know 
exactly why there's a low birth rate and why men and women aren't able to procreate, why they have to go through things like IVF and other things to try to have children because they can't have them because, well, there's certain things and certain products that are making men unable to produce strong enough. You know what? Same with the women and their eggs. The team from the Institute of Biomedical Engineering and Technology in China's eastern province designed the robot to constantly monitor and care for human embryos by adjusting the nutrition, carbon dioxide, and other important factors in the artificial embryos. So let's just, that's the word underline. Let's just take a look at the word artificial. It's not real. So these don't even be real babies, right? Interesting, too, that the population is so low and they want to push parents, or women, I should say, into going to planned you-know-what. Maybe if we didn't have that, then we'd have more kids and the population wouldn't be a problem. But it's funny how they're looking at it saying the population's too low all of a sudden. Because all we've heard about is that the population's too high. Interesting. Just another way to transition into this embryonic development and biomedical engineering, right? And of course, you know how it's going to be marketed as well for other people out there. They'll tell you 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 could pre-select the gender of your child. Ooh, I can. Yes. You can pre-select the gender. If you're a man and a man, you can just have the child. Right? If you check, you know, it'll just be perfect. You could just already see how it'll be marketed. Roll out Taylor Swift and the other celebrities. And suddenly we have a world where we're having, well, biomedical engineering making babies. Babies out of pods. They say in their paper research, excuse me, in their paper, the researchers say their system could help to uncover many unsolved mysteries about the physiology of typical human embryonic development. What's more, it could also provide a theoretical basis for solving birth defects and other major reproductive health problems. Well, of course they'll market it that way. You don't have to worry about birth defects. Right? The baby will be perfect. It'll be transhuman. It'll almost be like a robot. Oh, wait, it will be, because it won't be a real human, just like what we're seeing happen now with altering DNA. What more can I say? You saw the horror story for yourself. You have Elon Musk and these people talking about it, of course. When did these people gain power? When did Elon Musk and Bill... Oh, because they have money? Well, they're only one person, these individuals. And there's all of us. When do we say that this stuff needs to be regulated? Oh, never? I don't think so. At what point do we say we're letting these psychopaths with billions of dollars, the elites, of course, dictate what our future should be? How we need a great reset, right? And then all this stuff goes down. How we need technology to be inside of us. Oh, is that what we need or is that what they want? The answer is that's what they want. And this is right in line with that. And this is enough to make everybody want to throw up on themselves. Reminder, check out the website at callforanuprising.com. It's United Adam. Check it out if you have it. I appreciate everyone who is here over on YouTube as well. I thank you for being here. The Patreons, because of you, it keeps this YouTube channel going. So if you're not a Patreon and you can become one, please consider doing so. If you think, oh, well, this channel helps a lot of young people out there who can't join the website, this, that's what keeps me here on YouTube. So please consider doing so if you think that this content will help wake people up. I appreciate all of you greatly. Hope you're doing well. God bless you and your families.